Hey everybody, what's going on? Born for XP here, and I got another video for you for Hearthstone. Uh, now the there was a tavern brawl recently, uh, where you play against the Dark Wanderer, who I know it said his class was like a warlock, but he has some priest cards in there, um, as well. My greeting. And I I don't think he has any other cards in this stage, but. It's a really interesting brawl, and it starts off, he's got three secrets on his side of the board. And his hero power is to summon a random imp. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so I decided to play... I, I, okay, to be fair, in this video I've beaten him before. Um, I beat him with uh, a priest... And then I think I beat him a second time with a rogue. Um, but for this video, I was playing around with this druid uh, build that I have. And the objective of this brawl... I mean, okay, if you win, if you win the brawl, if you just beat him outright, you get the card back, the Diablo card back, because obviously the Dark Wanderer is like a Diablo reference. Um... Uh, so if you beat him outright, you get the card back for him. Um, but there's a stage two to this matchup. Um, also, whenever is whenever you kill some of his minions, they'll drop either a weapon rack, which equips you with a weapon, or equips whoever destroyed it with a weapon. Um, a gold chest, which gives you two coins. Or, um, a, a discarded armor, which gives you five armor if it's destroyed on your turn. Um, but I just popped one of the secrets a second ago, and that was whenever you summon a taunt minion, uh, reduce all minions' attacks to one. Which is a really kind of interesting secret. I think it'd be interesting to see these secrets in, um standard, like, as actual secrets that you can play. But, there are ten different secrets that he could have on the board. And when you destroy all three, or when you trigger all three secrets, it initiates stage two of the fight. <coughs> and the secrets could be, obviously you saw the taunt one, uh, there is a secret for whenever you summon a charge minion, a spell damage minion, a death rattle minion, a stealth minion, and a battle cry minion. And then in addition to that, there is one secret that triggers when you play a legendary, one tr secret that triggers when you have nine cards in your hand, there's the spell damage one. Uh, the spell damage one is possibly the worst because it summons these two 2-4 two, totems that deal 2 damage to the opposite minions at the end of your turn. So if there's nothing in front of them, they just hit you. Um, and they're kind of hard to deal with in conjunction with everything else. Um... Because you don't, because they're not necessarily the biggest threat. Like, there's stuff on the board that you want to clear out kind of before them. But the longer you leave them, the more damage they deal. So it's it's pretty bad. Um. Anyways, the other secrets are. Um. If you have nine cards in your hand. Uh, if you're both below 15 hit points. Or, whenever you take lethal damage. Now when the third secret is triggered, it summons this invincible portal on the board. And then at the end of the guy's turn, 
it triggers stage two of the fight and he becomes the cow king which is crazy um now his hero power is passive um that says whenever a hell bovine dies draw a card the hell bovines themselves are two two creatures for three but they have death rattle that puts them back in the deck so whenever they die they go back in the deck and then he draws another one pretty much um which is not great uh it's kind of kind of difficult to deal with but they're not very strong minions so it's, it's not too bad now at this point in the game i'm looking fantastic pretty much 30 30 health five armor i got a weapon out i got plenty of guys in my hand but my objective for this video which is to break the cow king is to fatigue the cow king now that sounds easier than it is because to be fair you have to get to this stage um meaning you've already used a bunch of cards in your deck then you have to deal with him at 30 hit points trying to kill you while still you know using the cards in your deck and he's got he's got like a full deck He's got like 40 some cards no. in his deck. And his deck won't run no. out of cards, right? Because the hell bovines just go right back into his deck. So it's it's a bit tricky, but I do find a way to fatigue him. And I'm not going to talk about that right now. There are a couple other fatigue decks that I saw that attempted this. I saw a mage fatigue deck and I saw a rogue fatigue deck. And I don't know how well they worked. But I decided to go with a different route. And that was the Druid Fatigue deck. <coughs> now, the reason why I think the Druid Fatigue deck is the best one is because A, it's got a lot of defense. It's got stupid amounts of defense. And in the form of taunt minions, as well as a decent bit of armor. Um, but it also has the Jade Golem, which is going to be your main offense for this. Move. Move. Now, that portal that came out a while back, he's also got some really good, like, spell cards. Um, but that portal that came out a while back, um, there is a way for you to become the Cow King. And the way that you do that is you have to have Sylvanas die and trigger her death rattle effect and steal the portal from the other person before the portal gets triggered. The ancient one. And then you get to become yes. the cow king. So if you want to check out how to do that, um, Disguised Toast had a really good video on it. Uh, so you can check that out on his channel. Um, but me, I'm here to break the Cow King. I'm not here to become the Cow King. I'm here to destroy the Cow King. And the way that I plan on doing that... <coughs> is to allow him to fill up his hand with Cow Bovines. And then whenever he draws a card, it gets burned. Now, the other problem with that is that means that I need to have his board filled with shit so that he cannot play cards out of his hand. But, I need his board to be filled with shit that doesn't deal damage. Now, the best way to do that is to build up a really high defense. Let him summon out some guys. Move. And then kill them and hope that some of the treasure drops. Um, and some of the treasure I do destroy because I'm going to need the boost, such as the armor that I have currently. You know, I'm up to 13 armor, which gives me a couple turns to set up. I don't need to worry about my health as much, um, which 
not not a whole lot of issue to begin with considering that I'm at 30 hit points which is a really good thing for me because the fact that that one secret stopped me from dying and put me back at 30 health that's pretty much the setup that you that you want for this um, obviously you can tell that I could have easily killed the cow king at any time and if I was really trying, I could have defeated the Dark Wanderer at any time as well. Like, I, I, this is probably, I think, my third attempt to mill the Cow King. The other two, I ended up killing him too quickly and stuff. Um, but it, it's all about the setup. It's all about how can you set up the board in the best possible way. So that you can mill him as much as possible. And this is possibly the worst position that I was in all game. Because <coughs> that 10-11 was a huge threat. But because I took the earlier precautions of getting that armor up through the discarded armor, it wasn't as big of a threat as it could have been. So, I was easily able to prepare to counter it by throwing out my uh, 510 and then the Azure Drake, which sets up to kill it next turn with its spell damage. Move. Move. He's got a lot of hell bovines out. And that was another big worry. But, as you can see, because of my high defense, the taunt minions coming out, I actually haven't lost any armor. I'm still at 16 armor. And if I remember correctly, I do end up losing that at some point while trying to set this up. Because the other addition... Oh yeah, I didn't quite have lethal to kill that because of the stupid imp gave it plus one hit points. Fine, but, um... Job's done. The other thing that I had to do for this... Gang Up was a really good one to get rid of, because that would have made his deck a bit thicker. Um, but as, as I mentioned, I'm running the J Golems. Which means that what I want to set up is um, the infinite Jade Golem deck so that I don't run out of cards either. Because that's the other issue with trying to mill the Cow King is that you run out of cards a lot faster than he does. <laughs> Gotta take the Shadowcaster here, I think. Yeah, I'm, I'm just dealing with his big threats at this point, thinning out my deck to get to the Jade Golems so that I can get infinite Jade Golems, um, as well as trying to fill his board up as much as possible. Now, I already used both my swipes, uh, so this isn't really... I mean, it's not going to be easy to deal with them, but they're only 1-1, one, one, so it's not that big of an issue. It's the 8-6 that's the big threat. And I believe I trade my tournament medic to get rid of this 8-6. I'm <coughs> Fine, I'll wand. Ah! Yeah. 
the Gadget Zan Auctioneer was in this deck as a setup with the Jade Golems. Um, but unfortunately, he had to get killed a little bit early. Um, and I couldn't get the infinite chain going on the uh, Jade Golems. I'm out of cards. So now I'm completely out, and I can use my Jade Idol to start pumping my deck full of Jade Idols. I don't need to worry about drawing anything else except for Jade Isles. Show them no now, I'm prepared to take some damage here. I have my deck set up the way I want it. So now the only issue is getting all of the... Um, the zero attack shit on the board. The weapon racks, the gold chests, and the discarded armors. I'm basically just waiting to drop those. Or waiting for those to drop. Uh, and fill up his board as much as possible. Now that was also kind of lucky for me that he uh, ended up milling that tentacle weapon. I don't remember the name of it. Tentacle Arms, I think is the name. But if he had that in his hand in his hand, he could constantly chain it, and then he wouldn't mill as many cards. I mean he'd still mill eventually, but it wouldn't be as quick. There's one mill. It's gonna be a long, tedious process to get through his 40 some card deck, but I'm determined to do it. Come at me, Cow King! You cannot beat the infinite Jay Golems. The shadows beckon. Show them no! Move. Didn't get any good drops there. Done. <coughs> I'll, uh, I'll share the deck list um, at the end of this video. I actually completely forgot to uh, do that. I was going to share the deck list before the, uh, before the match, but I'll probably have to share it after the match considering that uh, I'm already recording this. But I'll share that. As soon as the match is over. Uh, so you can get the full de deck list that I used for this. Open fire. I, th I think it's kind of funny that I used the uh, Toshli to buff the other Toshli. The little 1-1 one, one now becoming a 2-3. got four out of seven as weapons and armor. He's dropping some more mills there for me. Uh, that was a pretty good card that he had there. It was discard two cards, destroy two minions or something like that. That's a pretty fucking crazy card. Move. 
Also, this individual match Move. took a lot longer than I expected. Move. And we're not even done with it yet. There's going to be like a 25 minute match. Because I still have to mill his shit. Um, but if I can get these last two bovines to drop, then uh, drop some loot, then I'll be fine. My board's looking fine, so I went ahead and shuffled some more in just to, you know, <coughs> make sure I didn't run out of cards. And that was kind of a weird play that he did. I don't really know how to feel about that play, because it was like he played a minion, then killed his own minion to gain health, and then equipped a weapon, and the weapon wasn't worth it, like, at all. Uh, the only reason I think Malagos was in this deck was because it was a legendary minion. And I needed him to trigger the, uh, secret. But his spell power was also potentially good in combination with, like, a swipe or a, uh, uh, what you call it? Um, Starfall. But at this point, I have his board cleared. So as long as he doesn't have another Hellfire, I think I'm fine. And I'm pretty sure he does not have another Hellfire. I'm almost out of cards. If I remember correctly, he is uh, full hand, full board, and cannot do anything about it. So now we begin the tedious process of making Jade Golems hero powering and then ending the turn and letting him mill a card and this was literally the only point to this whole video was can I mill the cow king without dying myself and yeah I can For the wild. it's actually not as hard as you would think and I considered doing damage to him to just so that the mill would kill him faster. But at the same time, I didn't want some crazy thing to happen that I didn't expect. And then have him end up dying before he gets milled to death. And I did that just to heal up the Jade Golem. To get him back to an 8-8 eight, eight instead of a 8-3, I think he was. Shuffling the Jade Golems, hero power in turn, shuffling the Jade Golems, mill a hell bovine. Boy, what a fucking game. What a what an interesting tavern brawl this has been. Now I've broke some tavern brawls before, but I think this was A the most entertaining be the most challenging and see the most well made that I've managed to break because yeah you can say oh well if you just become the, the cow king then you break the thing well I mean kind of but not really because watch what happens as he gets lower in cards some crazy nutso clown shoes banana pants bullshit happens where everything's going fine he's milling cards I'm drawing cards I'm putting cards back in my deck I, I'm pretty sure at this point I have like 20 some cards in my deck 
you know, I'm doing completely fine. Demon Wrath's a good one to mill for me. Could have just killed everything, cleared his board, got some shit. I don't know what the fuck his hand is filled with, but it's probably hell vo bovines. Also, I forgot to mention that at this point, um, you've seen him use Cleave, and that was a hunter card that just got milled. When he becomes the Cow King, of course, all of his cards change. So he gains Hunter and um, Warrior cards on top of the Hell Bovines um, instead of having the Warlock Priest cards. But this is this is obviously this this Tavern Brawl just came out this week. So this is a this is a recent video as opposed to all the other videos that I've done where I'm like doing post commentary on shit from a couple months ago that I've been backed up on uh, the only reason why I made this video so so soon so recent um, was because of how good this tavern brawl is uh, and I really wanted to explore as much as I could do with it and release it like as soon as possible um so that's why this is this is the point right here i summon the 12 12 and the cow king just fucking gave up the game just quit gave up uh i don't know what the fuck happened gave me this little screen here it's like you know i got 28 bogovines killed 58 minions killed i had no clue what happened that was just a basic rampage that i milled it wasn't anything special it wasn't like a turn 60 you know if the game lasts this long too bad you know, he's still got cards in his deck, he still had hit points, I still had hit points, I still had cards in my deck, the game literally gave up and said you lose. I didn't win, I didn't win, I lost, but the game fucking gave up and quit. I cannot fucking believe that, it's, it's so crazy to me that that's what happened. Anyways, let's uh... Let's go take a look at the deck, and I'll, and I'll talk a bit more about the uh, Cow King. Alright, so let's look at the deck here real quick. Now, I got uh, Double Innervate, Wild Growth uh, for Mana Ramp. I got Jade Blossom in there for Mana Ramp, as well as uh, Jade Idols, or Jade Golems, sorry. Uh, the Jade Idol is the main deck buff. Uh, the one that pretty much makes it so that I can't fatigue. Uh, I got, let's see, Feral Rage is in there for armor, uh, more defense. Swipe is just basic early game removal against the uh, imps. Tournament Medic is uh, in there for healing, pretty much making sure that I can micromanage my health levels because, you know, you kind of, you need to... Uh, the two secrets that you need to check for are you taking lethal and you both being below 15 hit points. So Tournament Medic just kind of gives you a little bit more control over where your health is during the actual match. Uh, Azure Drake's in there for the spell damage as well as uh, being able to draw cards because there's the one secret that requires you to have nine cards in your hand. Um... Lotus, Lotus Agents are in there for a couple reasons. They allow you to discover cards. Now, the reason why they're in there is, first and foremost, to look for any minion that has stealth. Uh, if I can get, like, a, a rogue minion with stealth, then that's good, because I don't really have a lot of room in my deck to sacrifice another card for one with stealth. I probably could have sacrificed one of the Lotus Agents for the um, uh, Hidden Tiger. I don't remember what the name of it is, but the 5-5 five, five for 5 with stealth. I could have sacrificed that, um, but at the same time, the Lotus Agents also allow you to get potentially another Legendary uh, if you don't have any already. Um, because obviously I'm running this deck and I don't have a lot of Legendaries. I have Nazoth, I have Malagos. I have C'Thun, and I think that's all the legendaries I actually have, because I I've been you know grinding to get all the cards that I own. I don't I haven't actually uh, sold out yet. Uh, that was a joke, ha ha ha. 
Um, but yeah, so if, if you have, if you don't have a lot of legendaries, the Lotus agents are in there to help you get more potentially, um, as well as they're very, um, what's the word I'm looking for? They're very circumstantial. You can get cards that, that, you know, maybe you need at that time or, you know, that, that you don't have in your hand. Pretty much they're just there for searching for things to trigger the secrets with, though. That's the main reason why they're there. Uh, Argent Commander's there for the charge secret. Dark Arakoa's defense, taunt minion. Uh, Jade Behemoth is taunt minion as well as Jade Idol. Coda Rider is just there to build up a board presence. Um, and because it's the summon 3-5 whenever you use your hero power. So the more you use your hero power with the Coda Rider out, the more board presence you can build. So that's good for both early game and late game. It, it just kind of depends on where you get him at and where you can use him at um, to you know, prevent the opponent from building board control. Cause that's pretty much all of what you want to do in this fatigue esque game. Um, Starfire's there for basic removal as well as card draw. Uh, ancients of wars are just the wall. It's basically just huge taunt defense minions. Uh, an iron bark protector is also huge buff defense minions. <coughs> Now, I believe at this time I was trying to decide what I should put in the last three slots for this deck. Um, and what I go with is the Gadgetzan Auctioneer because my my thought process on that was, okay, Jade Idol, it's either summon a golem or put more in your deck. Well, if I can't do both and I can only draw one card at a time, then that kind of prevents me from getting a big board presence like consistently I can get maybe one guy out on the field and slowly build board presence but if he's summoning several bovines per turn and he has infinite bovines I'm going to need a lot of board presence to deal with that so what my thought process was hey Jade Idol is a spell so combining that with Gadgetzan Auctioneer at the end game allows me to Jade Idol, draw a card, Jade Idol, draw a card, Jade Idol, draw a card, and so on and so forth, because they're only a one cost spell. So potentially I can cast ten of them per turn with the with the Gadgetzan Auctioneer there, which basically breaks the game at that point, if I can get that combo out on the field. <coughs> so that's why I put the gadgets and auction in ear in there. And as you saw in the uh, actual game, I threw him out early um, because I needed him out early and I ended up not getting the combo, but I also didn't need the combo at the end. It was kind of unnecessary, but he's in there just in case. Um, now I don't remember what the other two cards I had in were. I remember I was considering Lunar Visions at one point. Um, I was considering the Cult Master, but it wasn't quite as good because he, he could easily just trade the Cult Master with a bovine, uh, and I didn't. I wasn't sure if that was kind of how the AI was programmed to do. I was like, well, I'm not going to risk it. I'll just go with Gadgets and Auctioneer. At least I can take out two of them before losing him. Um, so let's go ahead and put the Gadget Zan Auctioneer in my deck, and then we will find out what the other two cards I put in were. Any day now. Yep. Thinking about it. Just think about it. Any second now. Well, let's talk about Gadget Zan in the meantime. Cause oh well, am I do am I doing it now? Am I doing it now? I'm not doing it yet. All right, that's fine. I'm just looking at what I have. Um, 
because again, Zan Auctioneer can, can obviously combo with, you know, Swipe, Starfire, uh, Wild Growth, Jade Blossom, Innervate. The coins also work. Um, so yeah, I put him in. Took him out. Let's put him back in. Put him back in. Come on, me. Put him back in. Nope, I'm not going to put him back in. All right, so let's talk about Gadget Zan a little bit. Now, the Gadget Zan cards have not been um, balanced yet. Uh, they are raw in the meta at the moment. Uh, and here's what I have to say about that. Uh, the Hunter hand buffs are not great. I think the uh, best one was the... I think it was a 3 cost 3-3 three, three that buffed something in your hand for 2 or something like that. Uh, that one was okay. That one was good. Uh, but it was only... I think it only buffs a beast, if I remember correctly. I, I don't remember. I'd have to look it up. But anyways, broad overview. Hunter hand buffs, not great. Paladins got pretty good. Um, Paladin was used to be the hardest class for me to play as. Um, with the hand buffs, it made it a bit easier. I think it really balanced up. The Paladins made them, you know, a bit more of a threat. <coughs> the Warriors pretty much didn't get anything good. Um, Taunt Minions are basically... Like, okay. Taunt Minions are very weird in the meta at the moment. Because so many of the Gadget Zan cards right now are based around um, aggro. They're based around aggro. And the problem with that is if everything is aggro, and it's so aggro, it's so good at being aggro, that you either have to go aggro yourself or you have to have the best control decks like hands down incredible control um because because otherwise you you can't beat the charge decks they can win on turn four if if they get the right cards for it you know like the 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 pirate warrior stupid good crazy good um and what that means is a lot of the good taunt minions, a lot of the, you, you either have to go early game taunt, which is not very good, or the only good taunt minions are late game. And that doesn't work against aggro because aggro is win in the first four turns and you just don't have a chance of playing any really good um, taunt minions. Or if you do, then the opponent's just going to run them down and kill you anyway. So, there's a lot of balancing that needs to be done, in my opinion. Taunt minions are basically worthless at this point. Uh, aggro is stupid good. Um, Jade golems are the like number one control decks at the moment. Because, as you can see with this... If you're playing a Jade Golem Druid, you can get infinite Jade Golems. And they go up to, if I remember correctly, I think they go up to 2020. So you can have infinite 2020 minions for one cost, which is fucking broken. That's incredibly broken. Impossible to deal with. Um... Unless you're playing aggro, in which case they don't have a chance of doing anything because you aggro them down to death. So, it, it, there's a lot of balancing that needs to be done. What did I put in? I put in a Silent Knight. That was my other stealth minion, was the Silent Knight, because I wasn't going to rely on the Lotuses. Um, I needed a good, just kind of stealth minion. It didn't matter if it was a good stealth minion. I just needed a stealth minion, and I figured the Silent Knight could at least take out two. Two guys. <coughs> but, 
yeah, the meta the meta right now is really broken. A lot of the Jade Golem cards need to be rebalanced because the Jade Golems are stupid overpowered. Um, so, you know, how are they going to balance it? I don't know. I'd like to see, but I'd really like to see Jade Golems get a little bit nerfed, but that, that'll be cool. I, I have, like, a lot of ideas for how they should change things, but I'm not a programmer i'm not a game developer so obviously you know my opinion doesn't really matter so anyway back to uh the cow stuff you saw my deck there um so if you guys want to try breaking the cow level yourselves maybe you'll get better luck maybe the game won't quit on you um but as for me i lost supposedly uh the game said i lose because i spent too long being good at the game so anyways thank you guys so much for watching uh let me know what you think in the comments below leave a like comment subscribe etc you guys know what to do blah 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 i'm just gonna ramble on for the last 10 seconds here anyway bye